Chapter 32 Silence Self-imposed or imposed by the self That which is, is sought, variously termed positively as light, supreme or primal consciousness, or silence or grace, and negatively as nirvana, and so on. Its aspects of chit and ananda, that is, knowledge, consciousness, and bliss, are expressed as the heart of all that appears as existence. In its aspect as grace, its one effort is to express itself through all that exists. This expression of joy is the eternal dance behind all the wakefulness, dreams, and peaceful deep sleep of life, though these three alone appear as our experience. The effort of humanity from time immemorial has been to discover this joy eternal, and this has been termed tapasya, or austerities. The result of such an effort is not the attainment of something new, but only fitting the vehicle so as to be overtaken by the ever-present grace and be in it and then to find that there is nothing but grace. Wherever there is a perfect vehicle, the overtaking and the expression of grace are immediate and perfect, and such a one is termed Maharshi, or Siddha, or Jivan Mukta. The Transformation Nearly 56 years ago, such a perfect vehicle appeared on earth. After 16 years of apparently normal life, the grace of life awakened in him, gushed in and out of him, caught and drew his normal consciousness deeper and deeper inward into that in which nothing but itself is seen or heard or known in which there is not the shining of the sun, the moon, or the stars, but which is all these and fullness itself. In the grace-enthralled or grace-embraced condition, aware of nothing but ever-awareness, the vehicle was propelled or impelled to Aranachala, light constant. Here, absolutely controlled by the light ever aware, he sat and sat and sat. He could not talk, not that he would not. He could not open his eyes, not that he would not. He could not move, not that he would not. What we call he was under the control of an inner something, which was to him an experience of unterminating awareness and bliss all-embracing. That state of fullness is muna, or perfect shanti, pure silence and perfect peace, the reality into which the Maharshi awoke and in which there was no he to act. While the small bubble of he was merged in the wide expanse and kept enthralled, his being was being renewed and reconstructed. The old faculties partook of the nature of the essence into which they were merged. Until his recloaking and redecoration was complete, hugged the sun firmly in his sleep, and the sun, enjoying the inner recess of his father's chamber, was of necessity lost to all knowledge of the outer thatch. When this process of attuning was complete, the parent let go the child to play with whatever urchins might come to him in the street. The child, in the same way as the parent, 
and being perfectly as towering a personality as the Father, was sure that he could not be tarnished by the touch of the foul urchins in the street. Nay, he was sure he could not only play with them, but was fully conscious that he could transform them all after his own and his father's image. Return of the Voice When he came out, he found that he had lost his power of speech in the fullness of his joy and communion in the silent language of his parent. He could have quietly slid back into the enjoyment of his father's chamber, but no. He was all compassion for the urchins, and he began to lisp and prattle like a newborn babe. Those who were fortunate enough to be close at hand when he came out of his father's chamber can testify to his first efforts to articulate. His vocal cords could not coherently put words together for long years after this release. But today his soothing voice, silvery eyes, and golden touch are the solace of thousands and thousands of pilgrims from the East and the West. May this grace be with us forever and bless all who long for light.